sometimes in life things go awry. Passion takes over, and art may pay the price. That's where we come in. Art restoration. Art restoration is a very important faculty of the day, especially when important art gets damaged. And one would really like it to return to its original, beautiful state that the artist intended. Like in art, sometimes relationships are broken. And we're here to mend the art. To and mend the relationship. The relationship. Restoration. Hey, mourners. I'm Sandy. And I'm Dawn. And we are Friday Morn Live. Today, we are going to be doing a little calming, sleep inducing art restoration for y'all. Yes. We have two original Bob Rosses to restore. Exactly. And sadly, these paintings were badly damaged from their original form. Um, and we actually have video footage capturing how they were damaged. Um, art, art mistreatment is a very serious matter. So make sure that you guys always take good care of your art so that they don't end up like these pieces. Okay guys, wait, can you, can you get into it? Can you put that in your drink? Give me a second. Doing? We're trying to do, we're doing an outro video, which was- It's not an outro, it's idea. a wrap up. Okay, well I said everything I needed to fucking say about the painting in the 12 hour long video that we just finished. People wanna know. So if you, you could put know. down the drink, so I'm like, start hurts because I'm like, yell at you the whole, whole time because you, you keep being fucked up. If you stop talking for even a fucking second. Fuck up. The only reason I'm talking to... so much is because you can't get it in your fucking head. Don't fucking that you're touch painting me. Sucks. Don't touch me. And I just, I don't have to tell me. you the fucking don't truth. Don't touch me. You know what? Guys, this is our painting. We fucking finished it. Are you happy? We did your stupid outro. Don't fucking. You look. Stop disrespecting me. Are you ready? This is not funny. Are you fucking ready? Your painting looks like garbage. That's the outro. I Your put fucking looks like time shit. into this. Do you know how this long we've is a been masterpiece. here? Oh, it's fucking upside down. It's a masterpiece of shit. <laughs> if you ask me, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck your fucking you, painting. You fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck. 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 How do you fucking like that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> As you can see, these two pieces have been pretty badly damaged, but today we are going to be restoring them to their original forms. And mending the relationship. We are going to first begin by removing the debris. Here I'm using special delicate tools in order to remove this instrument in order to not disturb the blood that has been resting on the top. And then you just drag it out, kind of like operation. I need to remove a few more delicate bodies because they're a little bit smaller than the stick that was just removed. And so we're gonna be just taking this pair of tweezers and just getting right in there again, like a game of operation. Be very careful that the blood does not get on the canvas because it will stain. As you can see, we already have one stain to clean up here. We do not need more. Perfect. Now this has been very severely lodged in there. So you just wanna hold the painting and just, just sort of get your tweezers around there and then just like yank. And then if that doesn't work, just like sort of yank again. Moving on to the back of the canvas. Don't forget to neglect the back of the canvas because even where the artwork is not, is just as important. Exactly, and structure is very important to the longevity of art. So we're just going to want to clean the back of this canvas up and just remove some of the debris so that they have a long, long lifespan. Using the same technique, I'm just going to discard of this debris. 
merely just use the stab technique to pick up the leaf and then drop it off. It's sometimes you have to be a little rough, and since it's the back of the canvas, no one will see this, so you're allowed to be a little less delicate. Okay guys, so we have some smaller items that we need to get out of here. So we want to do this very carefully so that we don't damage the canvas. So you just want to get in there with your tweezers, like you did in the front, and you just want to tweeze and pull. It's a very calming, repetitive motion. Tweeze and pull. Tweeze and pull. We got a big piece there. Tweeze and pull. Tweeze and pull. Tw Tweeze and pull. Tweeze and pull. Tweeze and pull. Tweeze and pull. Tweeze. And, pull. and as you can see, we've about cleaned off the campus. So now it's time to, to move on to the big moment. This is a delicate procedure. You're gonna wanna do what you did for the first stick because this one seems to be pretty soundly in there. You just wanna sort of pull out a little bit with your tweezers, really work it. Oh, she's getting part. Wear her down a little bit. Just really make her wanna leave. Shake a little bit. And just, just want to brush it off. Brush it off. And there you have it. All right, so next we're gonna clean up, the finish cleaning up the back. And I'm just gonna start by erasing some of those marks from the delicate tool. Because sometimes before things get better, they have to get a little bit worse. And then you can just go ahead and reverse that action with this handy dandy eraser tool and it really works well and if you're like you can really rub that in with your finger and then you'll just brush off that debris next we're gonna i'm gonna finish that off camera and then we're going to take another tool which this was actually free because restoration can get expensive but sometimes you just have to use the materials available to you and you're just going to take that out unwrap it so you get maximum surface area um, and then you're just going to lightly rub off the, the staining on the back of the paint and you just have to use a little bit of elbow grease. And then I'm just going to finish this off camera. For the back of mine, for a gentler touch, since this canvas has already been damaged enough, we're going to be using just a little bit of Pond's cream. So you want to dab, dab that on the dirty areas and just, just rub, just rub it in, rub it in, and then afterwards you're going to take it off once it's sort of absorbed into the pores and has removed the dirt that it needs to remove. So now I know a lot of people might ask me in the comments, what's this? Are we gonna remove this paint? We are not gonna remove this excess paint because this is what the artist intended. This is actually how the artist, Bob Ross, signs his paintings. He does it with a Morse code style set of paint splotches that go along the back. Um, so we will not be touching those nor removing those, um, but we will be removing right up here where the dirt is. We're just gonna wanna get in there Make sure to work extra hard at the grass stains and just get it out, get it out, get it out. You, should, you can use your fingers for this because it's the back. It's very unprofessional to do this with the front, but you can definitely do this with the back. And then what you wanna do is you wanna just take, take a paper towel, spray just a little bit of Fortnite on it. Then you wanna get in here. This is gonna, you wanna be very gentle with this you don't want to damage the painting, 
We just want to make sure that there's no bacteria on it at all. Because bacteria can eat away at the canvas and make it very, very hard to preserve the art, which is important. And as you can see, the dirt is basically gone. So now I'm going to use a little bit of cleaner in order to further remove these dust stains. And I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Is that my song? Wiping it off. Um, yes it is. This is a- Guys, I invented this technique. It's really, really helpful for removing the dirt. Um, I don't think you invented Lysol. Alright, so in this part, we're going to be doing the same techniques on both paintings. So we're just going to show you on one and then now we do it on both. First, we're going to brush off all the loose dirt by just using a um, heavy bristle brush, very important technique. And another good method to get rid of some of this is to just take an eraser and kind of lightly erase some of that dirt. Here, if you notice, there's a little bit of like graffiti um, and artwork, so we're really just going to try and blend that in as much as we can um, to kind of get rid of that symbol, which was not the artist's original intention. So now, the next step is going to be getting into these sanitizing wipes. And basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to take one, be very gentle with this, because this will disturb the paint if you're too rough. And you're just going to want to do a gentle, just take one, just take one. And do a gentle swipe over the painting. Maybe one more. Remove the dirt, you know? Don't pull too much, don't create too much friction. Just get the dirt off. I'm gonna press down and sort of just pull up. It should carry most of the dirt with it. This is also pretty effective for tougher stains like blood, though you might have to work a little bit harder and it might disturb a little bit more paint. As you can see, it really works. And doesn't take up that much paint either. So see, once we've once you've gotten it all like this, you want to take your next one. You want to start with that. So now press it down and pull up. Press it down and pull up. You just want to keep at it until the dirt is gone. So now we're going to create our own tool because sometimes in restoration, the tools you need need to be specifically made. So we're just going to wrap a nice paper towel in this pencil and then soak it in a little bit of solution. Just get that right on there. And this is really important for the painting because it can help balance out some of the enzymes and pick up any remaining dirt, you know? It really soothes the painting and relaxes it right before you're going to do the retouching, which can be stressful for the painting. So we really need to make sure to rub this in, just like that, without disturbing the paint layer. For me, I find that the softener works best and I prefer to use it because it needs a little bit less precisity when in use. So what you want to do is you just want to let it sort of settle on the painting and then you want to just like let it soak in and soak up the excess. And that's really going to soften, relax your fabric, 
Then you go in later. We are going to be fixing these holes. So we have a deep gash here and then we have a few sharp punctures throughout this section. So what we're going to be doing, because we have small holes and we are very crafty, so we're going to be taking just simply a band-aid and unrolling it and placing that very, very gently on the artwork. Who's a good baby? Who's a good baby? Oh, yes, you are. You are patched up. Yes, you are. See, and then you're going to move on to the next bandage. And you're just going to make sure that you cover every hole because you can always paint over these, but you can't paint over your open wound. Now, remember, just repetitive, slow, very careful, really maximize your space with the bandit. Do you go, baby? Do you go? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling better. We are now just going to be coming in from the back to make sure that it's stable. We have the band-aids on front, giving them like a warm, neutral flesh tone. And now we're gonna be taking this duct tape for added stability and just making sure those holes are closed. As my mom always taught me, close up any and all holes that you see. They should never be open. And see, this will just stabilize it and make the band-aid's job a lot easier. This is for longevity, and though it may look a little crass right now, this does really contribute to the longevity of the painting. All right, guys. Now we're gonna tear and patch up these holes right here, and we're just gonna. Take that right here and really, really press these together. You want to make sure that the hole is closed and nice and lined up, that all the fibers are together, just like that. And then you're just going to put some, some duct tape over it. I'm going to do two layers so that it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to secure these tabs down with, you guessed it, some more duct tape. I don't know. I, I don't know why this is happening guys. Sometimes there are little errors in how things things go. But I'm just gonna get this piece. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I'm gonna get this piece right here and secure down these tabs so that everything will stay in place. And then we're gonna flip the painting over to the front side where you can see it's pretty patched up, like that. And we're just going to take a nice... Oh, fuck me. Oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes you just really can't catch a break. Okay, we're going to get a nice, clean piece of duct tape, like this. A nice, clean break. I wish I could catch a break. Um, and then really just sandwich it. Lay it on there and lay it down nice and smooth. You don't want any air bubbles. So we're just gonna press those down to get rid of any air bubbles. And it's perfect. And here we are just retouching the mountains so they get sort of their snow-capped luster back. So you kind of want to really pack that white on, but like it's a delicate back, you know? Like you want to get a lot, a lot of product on there, but you also want to make sure not to alter the artist's original work at all. So just be very, very careful and just sort of, just 
really get in there. guys welcome back we have finished the painting reconstruction of the pieces as you can see they look almost exactly identical to their previous um to their previous uninjured states and now we will just be setting our workers with a little bit of glade both for set day and to really hold that paint in for longevity oh yeah your weapon of choice Ugh. It's kind of like a final coat for everything on the painting to really seal it in. We set that even harder with a little bit of makeup setting spray for just to really pack everything in. Oh, can we see that brand name just so everybody at home can follow along? This is the NYX Dewy Finish. Because this is a tutorial. I highly recommend this when reconstructing our work. Obviously, it kind of sucks though. Obviously, for you guys at home, you'll have different art pieces that you're restoring, but this is a tutorial, so you can follow along. Wow. Look at that, look at that. Look at the dewy finish. Okay guys, these are the final paintings. As you can see, the restorative work is barely noticeable. You can't even tell that there's a little band-aid underneath there. It's just, it blends in to the painting and it looks exactly like the original. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'm really good, sure, I'm good, it was sure, 
I'm sure it was good. <laughs> Fantastic, great, gorgeous, um, wonderful, or exciting. Because we work really hard and we work in it hard and we work really hard on all the videos and we do really hard on them. <laughs> so now actually just it was breaking every time.